Pai Ren, I'm Siang Tiong, the general manager of Southeast Asia Kaspersky. Today, I'm going to share with you how a notorious cyber criminal group managed to hack into banks and siphon cold hard cash from ATMs around the world. Let's start. To begin, let me give you a glimpse of who is Kaspersky. We are founded in 1997, and today we have presence across 200 different countries. And since then, 400 billion users have benefited from our technology. We have protected them from all sorts of different attacks. Apart, one third of our employees are R&D specialists. Apart from a big team that is doing antivirus, anti-malware, we have a crack team of 440 world-class researchers. And among them, they track 200 ultra-sophisticated cyber criminal groups. These are the statistics. One billion cyber threats has been detected by Kaspersky since the inception. Just last year alone, 10 billion cyber attacks were, were stopped by us. And every day, we continue to receive 360 new, unique malicious files. That is a sad state. And that's how chaotic is the world today. I digress. Let's start. Today, the main story is about Kauna. How did it begin? It began with a 3 a.m. phone call. Hey, are you asleep? Gotta be kidding. The call came to our researcher because the bank saw the criminals siphoning cold hard cash from the ATM machine. What actually happened? Well, let's go back to 2010. Jack Barnaby did a demo in Black Hat event. He demonstrated that the ATM can be compromised. And once compromised, ka-ching, ka -ching, you can speed up the cash. Almost like we need a jackpot in a casino. Three years later, even though he didn't share the source code, the most sophisticated copycat came. The name? Kavana. The first wave, 2013 to 2015, our investigation began in Ukraine. One day, a bank employee called our researchers, insisting that we come to them. Our researchers packed our bag, we went. In Kiev, they took us to a room and showed us CCTV footage. ATMs were spitting cash. At the bottom of the screen, you see a guy in hoodie, scarf, collecting the cash. One million dollar later, he disappeared. Oof, gone. Initially, we thought it's a troop pin malware. We have seen this before. Right? You compromise the ATM, you key in the code, it speeds out the cash. We asked for the hard disk, we took it back for analysis. Then, 3 a.m., another call, this time from a Russian bank, a big Russian bank in Moscow. There was no CCTV. They brought us to their domain controller. Now, for all of you who understand who, what exactly is a domain controller, this is the most critical server in your environment. It exactly tells you where are all your, your computer servers and where are all your PCs and laptops. The domain controllers is sending data to an IP address in Asia. So the researcher opened a process explorer to see what processes are running. They spotted a very suspicious remote access to FNC. A large Russian bank an IP address in Asia, and a remote access tool. And the researcher thought, what if 
What if the hacker is still active on the other side? He opens a text editor. He typed hello. He waited. He waited. This came. Obviously, the bank has been compromised. In 2013 to 2015, these were all the countries that has been affected. This is a heat map. These are the countries that were hit. This is where the heat heats up as well. One billion dollar has been siphoned off various ATMs, various banks. How did they do it? The modus operandi goes like this. It starts with a phishing email to a bank employee purporting to be the central bank who will not open an email from a central bank, right? The bank employee opens it, boom. He didn't know, he's attacked. The malware came in, opens up a back door, allows more to come in, and it moves laterally within the organization, trying to find where, are the, where is the goal. They hit upon the cash transfer system, that's where they, they strike go. Through that, they can either transfer the money, a Swiss transfer into a fake bank account, or split up the cash through an ATM and get money mail to collect it. On average, it takes about two to four months to drain every victim bank, starting the first day from the first day of infection. Scary, right? There's no stopping. Fast forward, summer 2016, Taiwan got hit. Cyber criminals found a weakness in the cash machine which caused it to spit all of its money out at the lot in time and place. The malware was extremely sophisticated. If suddenly all your ATMs are empty, something has happened. And the people started realizing this is a really big crime. Thank 外国人那瞄了一下发觉提款机室里面也有另外一个外国人那我稍微多注意了一下发觉这外国人都带着帽子渔夫帽带着口罩那跑出来之后我当下立刻往提款机室走过去那在外面那个外国人看到我走过去之
3 million were dispensed. 500 local police tracking the CCTV, running after the mules. Eventually, 19 money mules managed to escape. However, they managed to apprehend, they caught three mules. They were all sentenced to four to five years in prison each. And together, they managed to retrieve 90% of the money. That was good. And the telecommunication data gathered by local police in Taiwan triggered a global hunt for the heads of the Kavanaugh gang. From Taiwan to Spain, local enforcement agencies from Taiwan worked very closely with Europol. And they were connected to, they realized they were connected to the incidents of ATM hackings in, in Spain. Started in 2017, Interpol, Europol, Spanish police, Eventually, the main suspect was caught. In March 2018, the Spanish National Police arrested Ukrainian citizen Denis Katana. He was arrested in his home. His computer still on. That was a lucky break. That allowed local enforcement agencies to collect forensic evidence. Now, you would think that this means the end of Kavana. Well, unfortunately, no. It is here to stay. In 2019, there were news that Kavanaugh is back. And guess what? The source code is actually uploaded to open virus total portal. Open source. Well done. Now, there are many copycats who can get their hands on the software. In 2021, June, two Kavanaugh hackers were sentenced to eight years of prison in Kazakhstan. Copycats. Well, the situation is Kav Kavanaugh is not the only criminal group around. This is the advanced persistent threat landscape in 2020. You can see that there are so many targets from government, to financial institutions, to telecommunications, to 10 significant threat actors were Lazarus, Deathstalker, and etc. You can read. Remember the crack game I told you about? Together, they tracked 220 plus criminal groups around the world. These are some of the major discoveries that we have over the past years. We will expose them we share the information with law enforcement agencies, and hopefully, we can minimize the impact. So how can financial organizations avoid becoming prey, not just to Kavana, to any of the APT groups out there? Well, you have to fight technology with technology. Deploy a holistic approach to cover, to predict, to prevent, to detect, and to respond. It is hard to arrest criminals, but intelligence helps so that you can work ahead of time and you can prevent attacks. So don't forget your employees, your partners, your suppliers, anyone that has access to your IT or is connecting to your IT network is part of the ecosystem. Programs mm -hmm. such like as Kaspersky Automated Security Awareness Platform helped to reinforce the skills and conducts simulated phishing attacks so that they know how to prevent being part of the game. Well, there's a quote from Albert Einstein to say that it says, intellects pro solve problems, geniuses prevent them. Who you would you like to be? Are you the intellect or are you the genius? Well, in Kaspersky, we prefer to be the intelligence behind the geniuses. Thank you. Have a good day ahead.